We are going to use today and make some projects using the Tutti Frutti DSP. Now, like I said earlier, I've been talking a lot about DSP, which also means designer series paper. I just kind of shorten it for DSP, as many people do. Um, I love it. I love to use it. I love to make quick and easy cards with it. And what I want to show you today is a couple of different like cutting and layout designs that will help you use up your DSP so you don't hoard it because I know we're all hoarders and we don't want any more hoarders. We want to we want to use it and make beautiful cards with it. You know, one of my mottos is let the DSP do the work. OK, we can make some beautiful cards with just very little additional stamping and stuff. Let's get started. Like I said, tutti frutti. This is a six by six paper stack. Now the ideas that I'm going to share with you today, you could easily do with your 12 by 12 papers. Just cut them into six by six sheets before you start. And then that way you'll be able to um, use these same layout ideas. But this paper is so super fun. Um, it has all of these really fun um, fruit images and it coordinates with our fruit basket stamping up uh, stamping up stamp set and it this one has a lot of the same fruits in it some adorable cute words and then we also have some cute little punches so this is what we're um, gonna use for our projects today and the other neat thing about this paper when you flip it over you'll notice that the back sides don't have the fruit but they have nice small little patterns that you'll be able to use along with all other projects okay it doesn't have to just be these fruity projects that I'm going to show you today so those are what the 12 sheets all the different ones look like so we'll just set that aside here and I have actually four different projects, so to speak, to share with you, and a ton of samples to show you. Um, but it's all based on how you cut your DSP to, to get the most out of it, plus using up your scraps, because I think that's a fear people, they don't wanna cut it because then they're afraid they're gonna have all these scraps that they're not gonna use. And oh no, we use up the, the scraps as well. So for the first two cards that we're going to make we're going to go ahead and take a piece of the six by six and we're going to go ahead and cut it and we're going to start with cutting a piece at four inches okay so this piece will be four by six that leaves me a two inch piece and we're going to cut it down to five and a half and these two pieces will make two cards for me so the only waste and you could even use this for something if you really wanted to um, is that little piece. So we'll go ahead and set the cutter aside and let's go ahead and I've kind of pre-cut some stuff here for you. I just have a normal size card base and for the first card we're going to take this four by six and we're going to rip it. Now years ago we used to tear paper and cardstock all the time and I know some people totally freak out over that. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't tear it. Yes, you can tear it. But when you tear it, and if this really bothers you, then just use your cutter and cut it for a straight line. But tearing adds some interesting dimension to it. So we're going to flip one side of it. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and layer it onto our card like so. Um, we have our green, green glue. Um, Tombow Multipurpose Glue is my favorite. I use it almost exclusively, except when I just need those specialty type adhesives. Um, I have a whole video on just different adhesives and how to use them. So if you, um, if you struggle with adhesives and figuring out what works the best, make sure you check out that video. But we'll um, go ahead and adhere both of those down on there. And then the other piece and we're going to go ahead and I have another card base, so another piece eight and a half by 11. And then I have a two and a half by five and a half um, or two and a quarter, I should say, because our little strip here that we cut at two and five and a quarter will fit on this one. So I just grabbed a bunch of different coordinating colors to go with the DSP. This um, this pack was really fun because there was a ton of colors. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to just glue this piece down on the front. So you can see here what we're ultimately doing is making two cards 
out of that one piece of DSP. And so I'm not going to do all of the stamping on these cards because I've got like 20 cards I want to show you, but I'm going to go ahead and just do a few things, ones that I feel um, will give you more stamping tips. This first one, okay, we've got the, the beginning of our cards here. We're going to make a happy birthday card out of the first one. And if you look at the stamp set, make sure, let's try not get a glare here. There's a stamp in here that says, happy birthday to you. It's one long piece. Well, I love to use circle punches. I do a lot of circles and it was just way too long. So I actually took my scissors and I, I do this a lot and I actually cut it. You can see right here, here's the to you, but I have the happy birthday already stuck on a block here. And that way it makes it so it's not quite as long and I can go ahead and type, type. Gosh, my words are just getting all funny today. Happy birthday. And then rather than happy birthday to you, I want this one to say happy birthday friend. So friend was just an individual stamp. So I was able to, because I cut them, do happy birthday friend, really simple. And then we'll take a one and three quarter inch punch. Like I said, I love my circle punches. I, um, I use lots of circle punches and it fits in there perfectly. So we can set that aside. And then to go ahead and finish our card, I've got a circle that's one bigger. So that one would be two inches. And we'll go ahead and I already punched that piece out to save a little time. And that's gonna go onto this one. But now, cause we wanna use the stamp set and do a little bit of coordinating pieces, I'm gonna take Lemon Lime Twist and Garden Green and we'll make ourselves a couple of lime slices. So we can go ahead and um, we'll use our scrap paper here. And you can use like the same color. I could take this one and stamp it on the scrap paper and then on here. And then when I take the second piece, cause it is a two-step stamp, I can go straight off of that ink pad to kind of get two different shades. Or if you want it a little bit darker to begin with, just mix and match some of your pads. So we will go ahead and take Lemon Lime Twist straight off the pad and then Garden Green, we'll do that way. And that way you get that nice dark rind. So you could do it either way, whatever works best for you. Um, now kind of the fun thing about these punches is you'll notice the punch is considerably smaller than the image. So if you're stamping the image, and this is true with the pineapple and the pear and the strawberry, if you're stamping it and not punching it out, it's going to be a little bit bigger than when you punch it out. But I think they designed them that way so that when you do punch these, you don't get any white around it at all. And, um, and especially with that two-step, you by putting them up close to each other, it's gonna be good enough, and then you just adjust your punch to have a nice even rind around it. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense there. So there is our lime. Actually, I have another one here. So we'll take our circle and we'll grab some mini dimensionals. And with these, if you watch the, um, the last Facebook Live, I use mini dimensionals on the barn door and they're so hard to grab. I like to use my paper piercing tool. I can just pick it up and then we'll flip this over and we'll stick one on the back of one of them. And we'll flip this one over and we'll stick that one on the back of that one. And then we can peel off these pieces and we'll just go ahead and stick them on there. Do you guys get dimensionals everywhere? I swear, these little pieces that you pick off, they are all over my house. Every place I go, I think I have dimensionals. Then we can use our regular size and we'll stick a couple on the back of our circle. And we'll stick this one onto this card. Okay. Now remember the whole idea of these cards we're making is to take your pieces of DSP and cut it a couple ways and then make some really fun, quick and easy cards. Now this one I already stamped and I put two lines on it so you don't have to watch me do it. Um, this one, you are the sweetest. This was one stamp, so I didn't cut my stamp apart to get it. So, but I really wanted to show you how I cut happy birthday and friend to get, to get that one. And then we'll go ahead and stick 
this one there. Now, I always like to use white on the insides of my cards if the card is made with colored cardstock. And I don't know, part of that's a personal preference, but I don't know, something about opening this up and writing here, it just does not seem finished to me. So I always use a five and a quarter by four. Um, and then here's some scraps, okay? I've used this paper a lot. I always save all of my little scraps. And so I just cut a piece that was um, one inch by five and a quarter so I can put it on the side. I'm gonna decorate the insides. We don't want them boring, okay? Um, you know, I like to make the inside coordinate and then also make your envelopes coordinate. And, you know, again, you know, I really preach quick and easy cards, which, I mean, this is doesn't get much quicker and easier than this, but they can look so stunning, especially when you kind of finish off that inside, you finish off the, um, the envelope, you've got beautiful cards. Now, I'm not going to stamp it on here because we could be here for hours with everything I have to show you today, but we can finish this off by stamping the inside. These would be our in that. And so there is our first um, set of cards, like I said, one six by six piece, and we got two different designs out of it. So you could cut up all kinds of pieces of DSP and make a bunch of these. So what I want to do, like I said, I have tons of samples to show you. I don't want to obviously stamp them all because you guys will be with me till midnight tonight. But here's a couple more using the exact same idea. This was a four by six piece and I tore it, flipped one side, um, you are the sweetest. Again, these pineapples are punched out. Um, I, I, pineapples are so in right now. They're, they're kind of fun. Um, open it up. And here's where I did stamp. Happy birthday to you. A couple pineapples in it. So it's all finished off. Um, here's our pear, which I think this is so fun. We make a great pear. So I put two pears on there. Um, added the little heart. And this one, when we open it up, again, you are the sweetest. So great words in this set. This time I took and I put a real thin piece on the inside as well. But, um, you know, like I said, doesn't get any quicker and easier than that. But I think they're awfully darn cute yeah. cards. And then layout two, which was also part of that same six by six. I have a couple other ones to show you. I did add a little bow on this one. And then again on the inside, add that DSP, a, a little bit of easy stamping. And that one's done. You know. I think part of the fun of this paper is the colors. I just, lemon lime twist, oh my gosh, favorite. And then crumb cake is my standard favorite. Now this is the only one I think that I'm showing you today that I did not use circles. But I wanted to use the happy birthday as a full stamp, not cut in half that I showed you earlier. So I just added some banners so we could have the whole thing on that one. Um, and you are the sweetest. And then ones with strawberries. I just wrapped a little bit of Baker's twine. Now, this is Dapper Denim Baker's twine, and we're using Night and Navy. And Night and Navy is the color in this pack. Um, sometimes I think we, you know, we always talk about how we love Stampin' Up! products because they coordinate. You know, if I'm using Night and Navy, we know I can use other Night and Navy pieces and everything's gonna coordinate. Don't be afraid to kind of deviate from that. I really wanted Baker's Twine because I love Baker's Twine. It makes cards very mailable without extra postage on them. And um, by, by adding the Baker's Twine, and it is dapper denim, but it looks absolutely fine, even though we got Night and Navy here. So don't get too scared of mixing and matching. So there is layout number one and layout number two. Okay, let's talk about layout three and layout four because this is going to be the same concept where we're going to use a piece of six by six, we're gonna do some cutting on it, and we're gonna be able to make two completely different cards with it. So let's grab our cutter again. Now this time, we're gonna start by cutting it at two and a half. Okay, so I have one strip that's two and a half, and we want it to be two and a half by five and a half. So we'll trim off this little piece so this is a little scrap, um, save that. You might be able to use it for something. Then we're gonna take the rest of our six by six here and we want to cut this down to four and a quarter. Let's see. So let's go four and a quarter by three. I think, yeah. Okay, so out of this six by six, we have 
these pieces of scrap um, that we'll be able to use for, for something later, but we're gonna use the two pieces that we cut to make two carts, just like I did the first time, but this is gonna show you how to get some different looks as we're making quick and easy cards with the DSP. Let's do layout number three first. So we're gonna take this longer piece, which was two and a half by five and a half, and we're gonna grab our cutter yet. We shouldn't have put that away. And I'm gonna actually cut off just a half an inch um, from it. And what the idea of this is we're gonna cut it and we're going to flip it. So we're gonna be able to see both sides of the paper once again on this one. And we'll do the same thing with our little three by, um, what were we, three and times four and a quarter on this one. And let's see, we want to cut an inch off of this one because we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna flip these pieces. Okay, so we've got those two and those two. So we'll go ahead and do layout three first. And we're gonna take, I love the strawberries on here. Makes me feel like spring and hopefully it's coming soon. I don't know about you guys, but I am so over winter. Okay, so we're going to adhere that down, and then here's this little half-inch piece. We'll go ahead and adhere that right next to it. Okay, and there is the main layout for our card. And then for layout number four, we actually are going to use a little layering piece. Here. We needed it to be um, three and a quarter by four and a half, so we could get... Oh, let's put it on this side. I know I'm upside down here, but we'll flip it. And then we can put um, this one right on there. Okay, so here are the two bases of our cards. And rather than me stamping this time, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you how I made a couple using that layout. So here is layout number th three. Um, again, happy birthday to you. I wanted to use the circle. So um, I you know, stamped it. Two, two separate times, happy birthday, and then to you. Here's the banana paper. Um, now I didn't add any extra little fruits here because there was none that went with the banana and I just, I thought it was fun to let the banana stand on its own. Um, and then on the inside, you are the sweetest. This time I added our little um, banana paper down at the bottom. Added a little bit of linen thread and there's that one. And then here is my second one for layout number three. And you can see here's our little orange paper flipped. Okay, so we have the two sizes. I did add some lemon lime ombre ribbon on there. And here's two punch outs of, um, now we got orange slices instead of lime slices. And I did add a couple of sequins. I don't know if you can see them, just for an extra little touch. And then happy birthday friend and a little more DSP on that one. So there's layout three. And then for layout four, or here's one with the strawberries. Again, I used that dapper denim um, baker's twine on there. Happy birthday, friend. This one, the strawberry, it's not popped up. It's just stamped directly on there. I didn't want to have as much popped up on this one. And then inside, I just used a couple pieces of scraps. Okay, this is where I say save those scraps. They're perfect for things like this. Um, so couple of strawberries in the inside and you are the sweetest just like my bunny is um, so that's layout four okay so there are four different layouts so far but anyhow let's go to our next two layouts and again we're gonna use six by six this time we're gonna start by cutting up a whole six by six into um, one by four strips so we're gonna start by making it four inches this way and then we can go ahead and do one inch like so. So I am gonna do a whole bunch, I'm gonna do this whole piece this way. Now, quite often if I'm gonna use up a bunch of DSP, what I will do is take, you know, maybe four different patterns, four different um, six, you know, six by six pieces, whoops. And I'll cut a whole bunch up so we have a great big stack of them. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So we'll so I flip that and we'll cut this one in half. So we actually get out of one six by six, I'm gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I knew math, I probably could have done that without counting them. But So we have eight of these. So like I said, if I was gonna set out and do a whole bunch of cards, I would cut up several different pieces 
And then I would lay them all out on my table and I would flip some this way. So I would have both patterns and the other pieces, I'd flip them both ways as well. So that you, you know, just had this big pile of all of these pieces. And then you can just start mixing and matching your pieces to put together a whole bunch of cards. So and I'm not going to cut a whole bunch for you. I actually had a, a stack of them cut. And so I played around with them to find four that I liked that went together because we want to show all the different patterns. And then because we have a piece of um, a regular card here, I can go ahead and just glue these all down onto the card. The um, ugh, See how this slides around? That's a good thing and it could be a bad thing. That's really why I like this adhesive the most. Um, but when I'm gonna do this, you know what, I need one more here. Let's, you need five of these. So let's, let's stick that one there. When I glue these down, because I'm just eyeballing it, what I like to do is start at the left and put one on the left and then come over here to the right and put one on the right and just kind of work back and forth because by doing that, I think it helps you get them spaced out a little bit better. You know, I'm leaving, trying to leave about as much room in between as top and bottom. You know, that, that's what I'm using as kind of my, my eyeball um, to, to do it. So let's go ahead and put that one there and then we'll put this one. But, you know, here again, I hope I didn't leave quite enough space, but it works. Um, you know, like I said to me, cut up a bunch of papers and then you just start playing with them to put them together in different, different arrays. And then for the inside, once again, I'm going to put a piece of white and we'll put another piece of DSP in there, carry our pineapple theme to the inside, and then everything coordinates. So once again, I don't want to spend... Spend your whole day here um, as I stamp stamp the um, the greeting part. So I'm going to just show you a couple that I did. So I have two, and so you can see here. Here's four different pieces of that DSP, and then here's four different pieces with the strawberry. Um, I think that one's my favorite, and I did the two different berries under here. This these two cards I I did a little bit you know more. I've got a couple different pieces. This hello right here is actually just, it's a three quarter inch punch and it's punched out of a piece of the DSP um, to give me the whole image instead of just the two. And then on the inside, I stuck a couple also from the DSP. And now for our berries, this one I, I kind of put some more, but we've got strawberries that are punched and strawberries that are in the bowl. Um, and then this is embossed in white on a piece of night and navy to kind of pull out the night and navy. But what I want to do with this one is I just want to show you how I stamped this bowl because I think that might be something that will help you in your stamping. So I'm going to use night and navy and marina mist. And what I did for the bowl is started with the more solid image, okay? And we're going to do that in the lighter color. Okay, so we'll stamp that one. And then we can take our outline piece and we'll go Knight of Navy with this one. This is why I love photopolymer, because um, we can just look right over it and stamp it. Now, to do these berries, you, you're gonna wanna do a little technique that we call masking. Because if I was to just stamp a, a berry and make it look like it's tucked in there, um, it would be, it would go over the edge and it just plain old wouldn't look right. I'm going to take a post-it note and our image that had the solid one, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this again pretty high up here. I mean, the sticky part is at this end, okay, because I want to make sure I get some of that stick on my post-it note. And then take a scissors and I'm going to just cut the round edge of that bowl, okay? So masking, what masking really is, is covering up an image so that your next stamp does not um, go on it. So I'm gonna cover up our bowl before I do the strawberries. You know what? Let's try zooming in a little bit here. I want to just show you something because this is where people struggle with masking. 
can you see that you still are seeing a little bit of that blue line? If you cover it completely so you don't see it, when you stamp your next image, you're going to get a little white line. Um, I call it a little ghost line. So you want your mask to be just a hair down so you can see that, and then it should stamp pretty good for you. So let's grab real red and a strawberry. And you'll see now when I stamp a strawberry, part of it's going on my mask, part of it, oops, did I get too far down there? Okay, part of it's on the mask and part of it is coming up from the bowl. And then we'll do another one there and maybe we'll do a, a third one. Then let's go ahead and put some tops on these strawberries. Um, I could probably move the mask now. Oops, that one wasn't so good. It's hard when I can't. There we go. That one's better. Sorry, I think I came off screen again. Um, so now when I take this off, there's the magic. It looks like our strawberries are down in that bowl. We have a nice line there, the top of the bowl, um, and we're ready to go. So if we look at our card again, you'll notice that I took three other strawberries and I did them on scrap paper and punched them out just like we did with those very first limes and then popped them up on the mini dimensionals. So that's what gives us our, our finish off on that card. So there are our two completed cards and our partially made card with layout number six, right? Yeah. Well, you know, we went backwards. We, we did six before five. That's okay. So let's go ahead and do layout number five. Now, I have a whole nother layout, which is kind of the same concept of what we just did. Again, using a six by six piece, but this time we're gonna cut our card stock to, or our paper to start at five and a quarter. Okay, so this gives me a nice three quarter inch piece for either direction for those insides that we've been talking about. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip it. This time we're going to cut it at one and a quarter. Okay, so there's one and a quarter. This one you got to think a little bit more. Let's see if I do it right, because I've been known to do it wrong when I'm not thinking. Like, I can't talk. Okay, so we got to come three and a half to a quarter. <laughs> see, I almost did it wrong. And then one and a quarter right there. Okay, so this is an extra piece because it's a little bit smaller. But now, just like what we did, we're going to cut cut a whole bunch of these pieces. You can flip them the other way, cut a couple different patterns, and then you can mix and match them, just like what I just did. So um, here were some that I cut, and it's like, you know, we could do something like that and something like that. Or if you wanted two watermelons, you could put that inside or whatever, you mix and match them. So again, this is layout number five, but um, here's our couple of cards. So I just took three pieces from three different ones. Our pairs, this bowl is masked just like I showed you with a couple of pairs um, popped up with those mini dimensionals and our little bow. And then of course we got to finish it off. You know, here's all these little pieces that I said, make sure you save them, um, especially these longer, longer strips. So there's that one. And then here's the hello with the pineapple. Now this one I didn't have to mask. I just stamped the wire basket first and then I was able to just fill it in with, with some pineapples and we embossed our little hello on there. And then happy birthday to you with a couple of pineapples on it. So that then is, that was layout number six. So that is six different layouts that I've showed you guys just using your um, cutting up your pieces of DSP. Now, are you feeling overwhelmed? Um, like I said, I gave you all the directions or all the diagrams as I was cutting them, but I know some of you guys really like written tutorials. So I want to show you a tutorial that I have um, and tell you how you can get it, if you would rather have something printed like this. But I went through and I did, here's layout one and layout two, along with a cutting diagram. So it shows you exactly how I cut to get the four by six plus the two by five and a half piece for that one. And then 
Here is um, layout three and four, which we cut with the strip two and a half by five and a half and the three by four and a quarter. And then this bugger took me forever to do because I wanted to make sure you had good diagrams. Um, here we have um, five and six, okay, and it shows how to maximize to get your best one and a quarter by five and a quarter and your one by fours out of this one. But then I did go through and I took pictures of every single card that I just showed you guys and gave you the exact dimensions, the size circles, the everything that I cut and used, what's for the inside, the pieces of the inside, what's popped up. Um, but here are all the projects that I just shared with you. So if, plus a list of pictures showing everything that we use on all of these cards. If you like written tutorials as opposed to just watching videos and trying to get notes, I'm going to do a blog post on Wednesday um, and I will add this to the blog post that you can either purchase it, um, you'll be able to purchase right from my blog, or um, if you make a, a purchase for me between now and March 31st, I will give this, using a special hostess code that I'll post for you, I will email this to you for free.